Hey kids, welcome to another math video. This is for fifth grade Eureka Math Module 3, Lesson 10 Homework. And as always, I recommend watching the problem set video before you start this. Please try to learn how to do it before you attempt to jump in knowing nothing. Also, your homework should be done, and this is just a double check. The objective for the lesson is to add fractions with sums, that means the total of your answer, greater than two. So now we're getting into these big mixed numbers, and the directions are add. Okay, and it doesn't give us any um, tools from our math tool belt that we absolutely have to use. So the math tool that we're going to use is common sense. No, just kidding. Um, the math tool we're going to use is trying to simplify this work by um, using the whole numbers combined first and then getting common denominators for what's left. So it's actually really, really fun, fast, and easy. Let's jump right in. Two plus one is three. Yes, it is. I know that seems shocking, but truly, this is what we're left with here in fifth grade. So what <clears throat> I like to do is to keep track of the whole number, and then, yes, I'm going to rewrite it each time I have to make a change in my denominators. So we can't add unless we have common denominators. What would be the common denominator between these two? It's going to be 10. We're doing a lot of mental math at this point. So I know that 5 is my scale factor for 1 half. That means I will have 5 tenths. 2 is my scale factor for 1 fifth. That means I will multiply 2 times 1 and get 2 tenths. When I add all these together, I will have all of the three holes that I had in the beginning, and 5 plus 2 is 7. And 3 and 7 tenths is my final answer, and I cannot simplify that, so you're always looking for simplifying, and we just can't do it here. So wasn't that awesome? Let's do it again. 2 plus 1 is 3, plus 1 half and 3 fifths, so we're going to separate out the fractions from the whole. Again, having 10 as our denominator, 5 and 2 are the scale factors for the opposite number, so 5 times 1 again, 2 times 3 is 6. Now the difference here is that when I added here, my numerators only added up to less than my denominator. But here when I add them up, I get something greater than my denominator. So what I want to do is I don't want to leave any improper fractions um, here hanging out in my problem. I want to put everything together. So I'm going to rewrite it. Since I'm out of room, I would write everything down here and squish it if I had written smaller. But I'm going to rewrite it over here, and I'm going to change my 11 tenths to 1 and 1 tenth so that I can actually see the value of this improper fraction is here, which makes 3 plus 1 very easy, and then the sum of the uh, whole numbers and the fraction. So that's your final answers, 4 and 1 tenth. Hopefully you got that. <clears throat> Hopefully I won't have a big old coughing fit in the middle of my video. Okay, 1 plus 3 is, oh, it's 4, plus 1 fifth, plus 1 third. We need to have a common denominator, so rewrite your whole number. Please take the time to do that. If you don't do it, I promise at some point you're going to forget about the whole number and you'll end up with just fractions and then you'll say, why did I get this wrong? And I'll say, oh my gosh, I told you how many times, write the whole number. Our common denominator for 5 and 3 will be 15. The other number is your scale factor, 3 times 1, 5 times 1. Add them up, 4 and 8 fifteenths. Nice and easy, right? So how about over here? We have something that's very similar. 3 plus 1, there's your 4, plus 2 thirds, plus 3 fifths. So we're going to copy our 4, get our common denominator, for both. Now use the scale factor and watch out for your numerators because it's not just one on the top anymore. 5 times 2 is 10 and 3 times 3 is 9. That means I'm going to have another improper fraction. 10 plus 9 is 19 fifteenths. This time I left a little extra room. Did you notice that? Now 19 fifteenths straightened out into a mixed number would be 1, because 15 goes into 19 one time, it's 15 fifteenths, plus the leftovers. And so now you're going to put together your 4 plus 1 and your extra fraction. Always be thinking about, can I simplify my fraction 
Uh, we cannot simplify this here. Always be thinking about, can I simplify it? These are all in simplest form, so we're okay to move ahead. Adding again, four plus two, six, so easy. Plus one third, plus four sevenths. So we're taking it apart, making it nice and easy. Common denominator for these has been to multiply your two um, denominators by each other, and that is the lowest common denominator. Now, if seven is my scale factor for three, then seven times one is seven. And if three is my scale factor for seven, then three times four is 12. Now, when you add these together, uh, seven and 12 is 19. And we have our simplest form answer. Again, think about can I simplify it, but uh, if there's no number in common to divide, then you just move on. Three plus four is seven. Separate your fractions. Again, we've already determined that 21 is our common denominator. Now figure out the numerators by multiplying by your, uh, your other denominator. So three is a scale factor for seven to get 21, so three times five is 15. And then seven is the scale factor for this side, so seven times two is 14. And we end up with another improper fraction, straighten it out. 21 fits into 29 one time. With eight left over, now combine your whole numbers and think about your fraction. Can you simplify? And the answer is no. So I hope you got all these right. This is kind of a fun one. It's like a good time to build confidence if you got all these right. Pat yourself on the back. <clears throat> okay, 15 plus 4. Rewrite your fractions. Think about a common denominator, and remember that the strategy to uh, determine the lowest common denominator is to skip count. Sometimes it's just the other number. So uh, you could go 16, 24, 32, 40, and then you realize, yep, 40 is my lowest common denominator. Don't forget to rewrite your whole number so you don't lose track. Eight is my scale factor for one-fifth, so I'm gonna multiply and get eight on the top. Five is my scale factor for three-eighths, so five times three is 15. Add up your numerators. Don't try to do too much in one step. I always tend to write more. Uh, kids wanna like shorten things and, and cut things out, and eventually they'll forget something uh, anyway. We have our, I probably didn't need to put that there, but I was just preparing for the worst. And that's your final answer, 19 and 23 fortieths. And for this last one, you get your 20 and add 3 eighths and 2 fifths. And again, we know that our common denominator is 40. 5 is our scale factor for 3 eighths, so 15 is your numerator. And then 8 is the scale factor for 2 fifths, so 16. Add up. I'll be right back. And get 31 fortieths. And again, I don't have an improper fraction, so I can just write 20 and 31 fortieths. Okay? Now we only have three word problems left. Super fast. <clears throat> okay, Angela practiced piano for two and a half hours on Friday, two and a third hours on Saturday, and three and two thirds hours on Sunday. How much time did Angela practice piano during the weekend? A lot of kids um, were like, well, only Saturday and Sunday is the weekend. And I'm like, oh, the reason they gave you three days is because they really want you to calculate it. So we looked that one up in the teacher's edition and determined that the answer was all three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So we're starting the weekend early. Let's understand that the weekend here in this question means Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So we take all of our fractions and mixed numbers, I should say. And I like to write everything in an expression to show what I'm solving. And I try to encourage the kids to do that too. 
take all your whole numbers so you don't forget anything. Start with the biggest, three, four, five, six, seven. Now all I have to do is focus on my fractions. But what I notice is that these two fractions have the same denominator. So if I add one third and two thirds, what do I get? I get three thirds, which is equal to one. So now I know that this is calculated, this is calculated for a plus one. So now I have eight and the only thing left is this fraction that I haven't yet calculated. And so that's actually like just by kind of eliminating what you can, you can end up with not even having to get a common denominator for two and three, which would have been six if you did get that and you did, you changed everything to like three, six and two, six. You can do that too and four, six and you can add them all up. But why do all that work? when it's kind of set up so that you could start out easy. If ever you can get a whole number, just get the whole number. It's always easier to deal with it. So eight and a half hours uh, was Angela's practice time on the piano during the weekend. And then we used quotes. <laughs> eight and a half hours practice time on the, here's what we did, weekend. Because we're like, okay, that's your weekend, whatever. Anyway, so uh, hopefully that's helpful. And moving right along. String A is three and five six meters long. String B is two and a fourth meters long. What's the total length of both strings? So straightforward. So straightforward. You gotta love these. Three and five sixths, and two and one fourth. Again, combine the whole numbers for five and then take a look at what's left. Here you're gonna have options. Some students will say, I would like to multiply these and use the other number as my scale factor. And I will say, you go right ahead. But I don't wanna do it that way. I wanna find the lowest common denominator to use. And I will always wanna use the lowest common denominator. When I multiply six times two, I get 12, which I know is a multiple of four. So I'm gonna use these scale factors in order to get 12 as my lowest common denominator. And I'm gonna do that right here. So I'm gonna use six times two, so five times two. And I'm gonna use four times three, so one times three. So I'm working with the lowest numbers that I possibly could in order to put this together. I end up with 13 twelfths, which is one and one twelfth. And so when I combine five plus one, I will end up with six and one twelfth meters of string. And that is the total length, if you wanna put that. Okay, again, label everything so you know what you're doing. All right, and do click subscribe, come back again. I hope these are helpful. Last one. Matt says that five minus one and one fourth will be more than four, since five minus four is one. Okay, good job, Matt, that is correct. Draw a picture to prove that Matt is wrong. The problem is that he thinks it's gonna be more than four, but I'm actually taking away more. This is still being subtracted. So the best way to show this is on a number line. Three, four, five. So we want to get up to the five, four, three, two. These are kind of irrelevant because we're only taking away one and one fourth. So since they're divided into fourths, what I want you to do or what you should have done or to show in the picture, you start with your minus one. So you take away the one. But now I, I have to continue taking away. So subtraction continues in a negative direction down the number line. So we have to keep going. Matt is adding the one fourth back on. Matt's going this way, but we already took that away. You now have to continue in a negative direction to here. So take away an additional fourth. This whole amount, minus one, and minus one fourth has to be taken off of five. This is a picture that will show that you understand that. So where do you actually end up? This is at 
three and three fourths. And so if you can show this using a number line, you can prove that you understand you're continuing that subtraction. I hope this is helpful. Um, I don't think there's anything else I need to show you guys. So I hope you have a great day and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.